हाई गाइज वेलकम टू सी ए इंटर फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट एम सी क्यूज और मेन एम इज टू बी कवरिंग एवरी पॉसिबल एम सी क्यू फ्रॉम द मॉड्यूल एंड देन आर ओन एम सी क्यूज ऑलरेडी कॉस्टिंग दैट इज योर पेपर फोर ऑफ सी इंटर इन ग्रुप टू कंप्लीट एम सी क्यूज इंक्लूडिंग लाइक यू नो अरेंजिंग दैट इन अ प्ले लिस्ट वाइज एवरीथिंग इज ऑल देयर ऑन अ यूट्यूब चैनल सो नाउ वी आर ट्राइंग टू बी डूइंग ऑफ एफ एम If you want to remain updated with all the things that are there in costing and in financial management, you can join our Telegram channels, which are there uh, in the description below. Also, link to our regular courses is also there in the description below. So let's start it off. So today's question is all about cost of capital. Let's see what is the question. Which of the following is not an assumption under the CAPM model? Okay, CAPM is capital asset pricing model. Bring me the four options first, please. four options the capital markets is efficient okay b investors uh lend or borrow at risk free rate of return okay risk free can also be kind of debt rate okay the because debt is almost risk free okay then c investors do not have same expectations about risk and returns okay d investors decisions are based on a single time period now i am not trying to go through all the assumptions that are there in capm because that will itself take lot amount of time but then i am spending some time to be explaining you all what do you mean by capm model it was a concept which was made by a gentleman called as william sharp in case you know the answer then please comment right now pause the video and do that so i'll continue see your capm model works like this capm ke is equal to irf plus rm minus irf into beta factor i'll be explaining each of these particular terms but objective is basically to be finding out that how much returns are expected by the equity shareholders okay do remember whatever is expected by equity shareholders companies will have to give that okay and whatever company has to be giving that will be nothing but cost for the company so therefore it gives you an alternate way to be calculating your ke over here before william sharp the person who was very famous was called as gordon his formula was ke is equal to d1 upon p0 plus d now william sharp gave the formula of ke in reference to stock markets so what did he say he said that uh, he told that In my formula of KE, there are few things. Think that you are an investor. You are investing in some company shares, say TCS. Okay. Now, if you are an investor, how much return will you expect from TCS? You are buying the shares of TCS. Why? Because you want some return. You buy any asset because you want return. How much return will you want? At least I will want that much return that I can get from anywhere without taking risk. That is nothing but the IRF. Okay. so ke is nothing but cost of equity capital for the company that is nothing but the return that a shareholder wants okay that is first thing second irf is nothing but interest on risk free securities example if you invest say in government of india bonds if you invest in power sector bonds then in that case there is absolutely no risk suppose just a number okay suppose irf is 10% so 10% you can get anywhere beta without taking risk also why the hell you will buy tcs shares because i want something more what something more now how will you buy tcs shares are they available in a shop next to you no you go to the stock exchange but you don't go you directly open your dmat account okay or means your uh, portfolio and purchase from there like zeroda like hdfc securities like growth like dhan up and so on okay so therefore you buy any script basically from the markets okay how much return markets give that is going to be called as rm rm is nothing but return of the markets okay that is how much returns the markets are expected to give okay once you'll do that so think like this you could have got 10% anywhere suppose markets on an average have given 15% return you expect 15% return from the markets okay so your ke formula is taking this shape now that is 10 plus why you went to the stock exchange because you wanted something extra that something extra is called as market premium market premium is rm minus irf in our case will be 15 minus 10 that is nothing but 5% so therefore you went to the stock exchange because you wanted uh, to get 5% extra premium 
बट देन फॉर दैट यूल है टेकिंग रिस्क एज पर सी ए पी एम मार्केट रिस्क इज ऑलवेज वन ओके मार्केट रिस्क इज ऑलवेज वन बट देन देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड इज बीटा फैक्टर ऑफ एवरी कंपनी सी दैट बीटा फैक्टर ऑफ पी सी एस इज नथिंग बट से वन पॉइंट फाइव जस्ट एग्जाम्पल वट इज बीटा फैक्टर इट मीन्स दैट इफ द रिस्क ऑन स्टॉक एक्सचेंज रिस्क इन स्टॉक एक्सचेंज इज वन TCS risk is 1.5 times. Do remember, risk and returns are always going in the same direction. So therefore, if you are going to be buying TCS shares, you are going to be taking 1.5 times risk as compared to the market. But uh, you will want 1.5 times the returns also. Okay. So therefore, you are going to stock exchange to get 5% extra. And for that 5% extra, you have to take one risk. But you will be investing in TCS. That is 1.5 times risk that of the market. So therefore, you want 1.5 times the return also. So therefore, this formula ultimately will become like this: 10 plus 15 minus 10 into 1.5. So therefore, if you are going to be investing in TCS, okay, how much return do you want, beta? 17.5 percent. This 17.5 will become cost for the entire company. Okay, so therefore, KE for TCS will be nothing but 17.5. That is the return that the shareholder wants. Companies will have to be given that return. Okay, now every theory that every author has made, okay, is only valid under some of the assumptions. This theory has lot of assumptions, but one of the assumptions that is there is that investors. Have the same expectation. All the investors have the same expectations about risk and returns. So therefore, every investor will ultimately try to be thinking in the same direction. So every investor's KE will be coming same only. In my example, that was seventeen point five. Okay. So therefore, C is going to be the answer. That is, investors do have the same expectation about risk and returns. See, it's a common sense thing. Every shareholder is not same. Okay, every sh uh, shareholder will have different expectations. So, in case we have to be arriving at some answer, okay, we have to be assuming this thing because every shareholder's KE might be different. But company will only require one KE. So, therefore, there has to be an assumption. Investors do have the same expectation about risk and returns. Okay, so therefore, answer should be C over here. Yeah, that's the correct answer. I'll see you all next time. Bye.